But I want to talk to you tonight about overcoming the holiday blues. Overcoming the holiday blues. And, you know, in talking with people, maybe not necessarily this year because it's uh, still early, uh, but I have talked to many a people in December, and uh, I'll maybe go make a visit somewhere, and, you know, I won't say a word, but, you know, there's not a Christmas tree, there's not a decoration, there's nothing in the house, and a lot of them say something to me. You know, I, I don't judge anybody by, I mean, if you don't want to put something up, that's, that's your business, but uh, they just uh, kind of come up with one of two things. Uh, either I'm just not in the holiday spirit right now. I may get that way, but I'm just not. And then the other one just says, uh, I'm the only one that's here, you know, and, and so, you know, why, why do I need to decorate for myself? You know, uh, those are two of the answers I get. And uh, again, you know, Christmas is a special time. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to say you should have a tree, you should put up lights uh, and all this, but I don't, you know, some people just, uh, they see that season as a negative thing. And uh, I, just, I just don't think Christmas should be a negative thing. You know, we are celebrating the birth of Christ. And so I want to just give you six things here, uh, overcoming the holiday blues. And the outline, number one, is quit worrying. Okay, quit worrying. Number two is trust. Trust in the Lord. Number three is delight in the Lord. Quit worrying, trust in the Lord, delight in the Lord. Number four is commit to the Lord. Number five is rest in the Lord. Now, if you're like me, I like this one, okay? I love, the older I get, the more rest I need, I've noticed. Uh, so I, I do think a lot of times we get so busy doing things that when we get to actual the week of Christ, Christmas, we're exhausted and we really can't, you know, uh, enjoy the holiday. And then the number six is cease from anger. And again, folks, they're just, it just seems like they're just so many angry people. You know, everything, I mean, you can go into a store and just hear somebody chew out, you know, a worker there. And uh, especially as Christians, I don't think uh, that needs to be a part of our lives. Father, thank you for the night. And God, I do want to thank you for the Christmas season. It is a special time. And God, I pray for those that have the holiday blues. Uh, God, I pray that they would just realize uh, that Christmas is a celebration of your birth. And God, I pray that uh, we would just uh, have the right attitude, uh, not just at Christmas, but all year long. So God, I thank you for Psalm 37, and I thank you, Lord, that uh, we can. We can just walk down through here and see what you say about just being a Christian. And we're just applying this uh, to the Christmas season. So God, I pray that we would just look at these things and we'd look at our own lives. And uh, God, I pray that we would just uh, maybe even sense that the Holy Spirit would tell us there's somebody I need to call. There's somebody I need to go by and see. Uh, there's somebody that may be by themselves uh, this Christmas season. And and you could really make their day. So God, just speak to us through this word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Psalm 37, Psalm 37, 1, do not fret, okay? And uh, fretting is worrying, okay? Do not worry because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the uh, as uh, the green herb. And folks, uh, Christmas time kind of brings out more worry uh, in us. Uh, some people worry about money. You know, they're trying to figure out, you know, and everything has gone up. Uh, the only thing I've seen going down in the last year is gasoline. I went by neighborhood market and it said 259 and I just about 
had a fit shouting fit, you know, for that because it has been so high. But uh, you know, people worry about money. Uh, people worry about presents. Okay, and the thing I think of when it comes to presents, uh, you know, one thing is it is the thought that counts. Uh, I remember when we were growing up, and, and I kid you not, folks, we got a stocking. We got nuts in it, we got an apple, and we got an orange, and we got a banana, okay? And basically, we got one nice gift and one, you know, when I say like socks or something like that. But it's not the price of the gift, okay? Uh, and, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's just giving somebody something and not spec- expecting anything in return or, or you knowing you know, this person would really like that, and you just want to put a smile on their face. And that's the literal gift. But when I, when I think of presence also, I think of God's presence, okay? I mean, you know, we're going to start looking at the Christmas story this Sunday, and uh, it's obvious that God's presence was all over that place. And so, you know, don't worry about having the perfect gift or what people are thinking. And I'll tell you the other thing about Christmas, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of times there's family stress, okay? Uh, you know, maybe y'all haven't been together all year, or maybe, you know, there's something going on in your family. And, and folks, there's no such thing as a perfect family, okay? They're just not. I mean, there's some that are a lot worse than others. Uh, but, you know, this, uh, you know, thing of, you know, we're looking at the Walton family or the Cleavers, all right? Uh, it, it's just that every family has uh, some issues, and we 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 don't need to dwell on those things. We need to think about the positive things. So, uh, really, during Christmas, I, I pray that you will just quit worrying about things, and and things will happen. God, God will help. God will make things happen. Uh, Philippians four, Philippians four. I love this scripture. Rejoice in the Lord always. See, I think Christmas should be a joyful time, a real joyful time. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And folks, we do. Uh, we need to be gentle. Uh, you know, we need to, you know, uh, if, you know, if like two people come up to the same register from two different directions at the same time, the argument should be, no, you go. No, you go. Instead of being upset because somebody got in front of you. And, and there are just so many, uh, you know, things that we can do to, to, to knock the stress down on people. Uh, verse verse uh, 5 or 6, this is the verse I wanted. Be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything, folks. Why? Folks, God's got this. Okay, he's got it, all right? Whatever we need, it may, it may not be the best, what you think is the best Christmas, you know, or even the best time of the year. But God is in control. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. And I think these things are so important, okay? Christmas is a time of prayer. It's a time of thanksgiving. And I know we just came out of thanksgiving, but folks, we have so much to be thankful for, uh, and, and Christmas, I believe, should be a time of thanksgiving also. Let your request be made known to God, that's the prayer, and here it is, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. If you will quit worrying, you can have the peace of God in your life. And folks, I'm just telling you, we need peace in our life. This world needs peace in our lives. So just quit worrying. Number two, trust in the Lord. Look at verse three. Look at verse three back in Psalm 37. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Folks, trust is the way we came to salvation. And our whole lives should be li- you know, lives of, of trusting in God. We need to trust in God's timing. Uh, we need to trust in God's will. 
We need to trust in God's purpose uh, for our lives. Uh, We need to trust in God's plan, whatever he has planned. And, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, you you can be thrown curves around the Christmas season. You could go to a doctor and, and, uh, you know, you may, uh, you know, have to have an emergency surgery or some of these things that can happen. And and during those times, uh, we have to just keep trusting God and, and doing good. And the feeding on his faithfulness, part of trusting God is spending time with God also. You know, during the Christmas season, uh, you know, we need to keep our Bible reading up. We need to keep communicating with God through the Word. And, uh, I, you know, the, the Christmas story is not just Luke chapter 2. Uh, you know, there's other things, and we're going to try to cover a lot of these things, uh, but we should not slack up on our reading the Word during this time. We, we need to trust God uh, during the Christmas season. Uh, Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. And most of you can quote this, but I, I think it's important to remember that trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know what all your heart means? It means total surrender. Okay, I am going to trust God with my family. I'm going to trust God with my finances. I'm going to trust God with my relationships. I'm going to trust God in his timings. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Folks, there's a lot of things in life I don't have the answers for and I don't understand. And I do know this, God is always up to something. And even in suffering, God does not waste suffering. I'm reading a book right now. The title of it is Suffering, and I'm about halfway through that book. And even in suffering, folks, uh, we need to maintain that closeness to God and that relationship to God. Because, I mean, you think of the Apostle Paul and all that he went through, okay? He suffered a lot of things, uh, but he never forsake God. He went through a lot Uh, And we need to trust in God even when we don't understand uh, things. Uh, Verse 6, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. So all these things, directing paths, has to do with trust. God started you on this journey. God, uh, you know, keeps you on this journey. And we we don't need to come to a time uh, to where Hey, you know, we're just, we're just going to do our own thing. You know, it doesn't matter what season it is. Uh, we need to trust God. The third thing. Oh, and I did, I did write one thing about not understanding God sometimes. Okay, just because you don't understand what's going on, you still need to trust him. When I cannot see his hand, we need to trust his heart. Okay, talking about God and our relationship with him. Because... Even during the holiday seasons, there's the why. Uh, Lori's grandmother, I'll never forget it. Her grandmother died Christmas morning, uh, one Christmas. And, you know, the first thing you think is, you know, Lord, you could have done it yesterday, the day before. You could have done it the day afterwards, all right? But still, I don't know why that happened. But, I mean, you know, that Christmas, that's the thing that we remember there. And, And even in tragedy, Uh, We need to trust the Lord. The third thing I want you to see is delighting in the Lord. Delighting in the Lord. Look back in our our scripture there. Delighting is verse. uh, No, I've read. I've already got that. Delight yourself in the Lord, and uh, you shall get the desires of your heart. How do we delight in the Lord? You know, there's some things that we can do during the Christmas season. And I know this is kind of crazy, but one thing Scott told me they did on the mission trip, uh, they had some downtime and it was at night, and they went Christmas caroling. When is the last time somebody has come to your door in Christmas carol? Can you even remember that? When was the last time you took a group, you know, or, or you as a family? I think it'd be kind of a cool thing to do in your own neighborhood, you know, if, uh, if you could get some folks together and and do some Christmas caroling. That's what the delight is. Uh, Other things, uh, one thing Lori and I always do is we go see Christmas lights, all right? And, you know, they're really cool now. 
they got those ones I know over at Top of Fianna. Uh, I can't remember the name of the house, but you know they have the lights and, and the music and all that to that. And, and a lot of times things like that get you in the Christmas uh, spirit. And then as far as uh, you know decorations and doing that, you know uh, one of the things I love I mentioned uh, Sunday about you know I, I was kind of having the Scrooge moment <laughs> last week, uh, you know about putting up lights. But the thing that stuck out in my mind, and that's when I, I got under conviction two, two ways. Lori put me under conviction first, and then the Lord put me under conviction second, because we have a, a manger scene. And in, in, of all, if you look at our house, the biggest light, and you know, we even put a star up in the tree you know, there, and it has glitter on it and all that stuff. Uh, really, you know, I, we are telling a story uh, to our neighbors and to everyone. Uh, and so even delighting is doing something that you enjoy doing uh, during Christmas season. Uh, I, I remember, you know, uh, my mom and my sisters would make the sugar cookies and, you know, they'd ice them and they'd decorate them and do all that. Uh, you can really have some, some neat uh, Christmas things going on. Nehemiah 8. Nehemiah 8. Let me get this here. Nehemiah 8. Well, I'll find it here in a second. There it is. Nehemiah 8, uh, verse 9. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord our God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. And you remember they built the wall in 53 days. And they had this time of celebration. And the priest found the book of the law and was reading the word out loud, okay? And I hope you do that sometime during Christmas. Uh, one of the deals that we do before we open presents, we read the Christmas story. My dad did that when we were little, and we will always do that. But look at, look at the next verse, verse 10. And he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom uh, nothing is prepared. For this day is holy, Unto the Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Is our strength. And folks, of all the time, you know, I mean, one of my favorite Christmas carols is Joy to the World. Okay, the Lord has come. Uh, Christmas should be one of the happiest times of the year because it is the birth of our Savior. Folks, He had to be born, and I understand. You know, we observed the Lord's Supper, and we, uh, you know, I, you know, had a great service uh, with that, and and taking the Lord's Supper. Uh, but he had to be he had to bo- be born uh, for him to die. So uh, I hope you'll find uh, the joy of Christmas. Then the next thing is commit to the Lord, verse five, five and six. Commit your way to the Lord and trust Him. And he shall bring it to pass, and he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noon day. And a committing uh, to the Lord is, is, I think, in a lot of ways serving others. Okay, I, I know uh, there are families that at Thanksgiving, they have a tradition to where, like, on Thanksgiving Day, they'll go to the Salvation Army and they will serve food that day before they have their own. Uh, and even in Christmas time, uh, it can be a time of serving others. Um, you know, t- part of committing is, you know, you, you can volunteer. There's so many places uh, you can volunteer. I mean, we had two or, th- two or three in the bulletin uh, the last two weeks, you know, where you can put the, the you know, for the veterans, the wreaths on there and uh, the Salvation Army. Um, you know, there's, there's just so many places. Uh, that we can uh, commit to the Lord and, and to do serving and volunteering for others. The other thing is just helping the hurting. You know, if you know somebody that is, you know, down and you know somebody that is having a hard time, uh, just, and, and, you know, a lot of people uh, are afraid that people might ask them certain questions. But here's what I found out of, about those who are really, really hurting. 
okay? They may not even understand or even remember the conversation that y'all had, but they will remember one thing about this. And you know what they'll remember? You were there. Okay, you came to their house. You prayed for them. You encouraged them in the faith. So I think, uh, you know, uh, just being with, you know, one of the things Steve and I have got to do the last three days is our senior adult ladies make uh, Christmas sacks. It's, it's just a sack of stuff uh, for our shut-ins, uh, uh, some of the lady shut-ins. And we get to play Santa Claus and go there. And I am telling you, I went today to a lady uh, that is in a nursing home. And, you know, she said, well, what's that? And I said, it's a gift. From you? Nope. <laughs> that made me feel real good. <laughs> but I said, it's from our senior adult ladies. Well, why did they do that? I said, because, you know, you're a shut-in. And, and a lot of times, you know, you don't have a lot of company. You don't have, they just want to do this for you. Well, she just started digging through the sack. And just this big smile come up, and, and she just kept going through the sack. And Steve, you know, there was a lot of stuff in there. And, and a, when I saw her get to the bottom, there was just a tears running down her face. I don't even know these people. I don't even know these people that you're talking about. But they made this sack for me. You know, just things like that, folks. Uh, they're priceless. I mean, uh, I tell you, my heart goes out, especially at Christmas time for our widows, and for our shut-ins. Because I am telling you, I have had shut-ins tell me that Steve and I see them more than their own family sees them in a year's time. And folks, that breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. So there are ways uh, we can serve all others, and there are ways that we can make Christmas. And I tell you the other thing, these widows and shut-ins, they love kids. If you've got children, and you want to thrill them? Yeah, matter of fact, she asked, Sue asked, how's your six grandkids? She was asking about, about I, said, I said, man, they're doing fine. They're doing great. You know, so if you want to light up a face, uh, take, take kids or you take grandkids. 2 Corinthians 1. 2 <coughs> Corinthians 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, <coughs> excuse me, who comforts during our tribulations, that we may able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort uh, with which we ourselves were comforted by God. Two things about this. Number one, God blesses you so that you can be a blessing to others. God blesses you so you can be a blessing to others. And the th second thing is, God allows you to go through things so that you can minister to people that are going through. I was 30 years old when I was, uh, you know, diagnosed with with a cancer. It was a tissue cancer. I had two incisions and four, uh, two incisions and two skin grafts. But the thing I found out after I got healed up and was back at work, when I go into a hospital room and somebody has cancer, I can say, I know what you're talking about. Okay, and folks, everybody wants somebody to relate to what they're going through. And I believe with all my heart, God allows us to go through hard times and sometimes even bad times, and, and that's to help others. Number five, we're getting to the good stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently uh, for him. And again, folks, we all need rest. We really do. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, and even in high school and college, I just had this, I was an endless ball of energy. It's it just crazy. I, you know, I, I never slept in. Uh, Jonathan was kind of like that. He wasn't a big sleeper in her. But Sarah Jane and Lori, I'm telling you, they can sleep the clock. They'll go to bed at 7 o'clock at night and get up at, you know, at 7 in the morning. I'm like, what are you doing? I can't lay in bed that long. But here's what I'm finding out. As I get older, uh, Lori keeps Kylie on Wednesdays and Fridays all day. And uh, Jonathan got off early, so he came and got Kylie at 4 instead of 4.30. And I always run home and I grab a sandwich or eat something, and I play with Kylie. Well, she was going out the door as I was coming in the door. And I was sitting there, and I thought, okay, 
I've got almost an hour to do something here. You know what I did? <laughs> I got in my chair. Lori was talking to me. And then when I woke up, she said, I was talking to you when you went to sleep. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Uh, rest is a good thing. Okay, and again, I'm not saying being lazy. Oh, don't be a slug. I mean, Proverbs talks about, you know, sluggards. But I'm simply saying, sometimes we get so caught up in the busyness of Christmas that we are not getting, <coughs> excuse me, the rest we need. And uh, I don't know why, uh, last night I woke up and coughed and coughed and coughed. The night before, I did not cough one time. I'm just saying, the, I think it was the, the weather that has come in today. So keep praying for me. I don't feel bad, but I am tired of this cough. It is wearing me down. And one of the Satan's tools is to take our rest away from us. And folks, when we're not resting, we get irritable, we get touchy, we kind of snap at one another, husband and wives, all these things, you know, we, we need rest. Uh, Matthew 11, Matthew 11. Go with me to Matthew 11. Well, I'm telling you, I'm having trouble tonight. Thought I marked it, but I didn't. Matthew 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Uh, everything that I've ever read in college and going through school and all says everyone needs eight hours of rest. Okay? And again, it's rare that I sleep eight hours. Uh, you know, normally I sleep six to seven, some there, somewhere there. Uh, but we do need a time where where we can stop and rest. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. There's two rests that you need, folks. We need physical rest, and we need spiritual rest. Not rest from being spiritual. I said spiritual rest. Spiritual rest is when you go to bed at night, you're not playing these things over and over and over in your mind. You have the peace of God uh, in your life. And those two kinds of rest are very, very important. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, uh, you know, if you have some days served up, saved up, you know, a lot of times uh, from Christmas to New Year's, a lot of people take off or take an extra day. Uh, just sleep in one day. Uh, do as your preacher does. Take a nap when you can find one. All right. And then the other thing about rest is doing something that's just fun. Okay. You know how I, you know how I rest. You, the, I think you know what I'm fixing to say. You know what I do when I want to have fun? I jump on my motorcycle and I go. Oh, you're going to get killed on that. Well, I'll have eternal rest of then. And I, but but I'm simply saying. I used to golf, I used to fish, all right, but I'm just telling you, uh, for me, when I have, when I'm riding my bike, I am as just about as relaxed as I get in a day's time, and I really enjoy it. Uh, I remember uh, the, day, the day before we got married, uh, my groomsmen and us, we all went golfing. This was, we were married on December 27th, and in Lawton, Oklahoma, I'll never forget it, it was 80 degrees that day when we went golfing, which was just like, that is crazy, all right? And, and we all got to do that. So I am praying uh, December 26th this year, it's 80 degrees in Fort Smith, Arkansas, so I can get my rest. Uh, last one is cease from anger. I think you know this. Folks, we live in an angry world, just anger everywhere. And you know, there's some times that, you know, I just think, you know, I almost want to video some people and just, of course, I don't know how to video my phone. My flip phone doesn't video, or if it does, I don't know how to do it. But I'm simply saying, I really think if some people would see how they're acting, just stop and see how they're acting, they'd think, well, that, that probably wasn't real good. I mean, people explode 
over the littlest things anymore. And there's all kinds of examples in that. And we, we really do. We live in an angry world. And, you know, the Beatitudes tells us that we need to be peacemakers. We really do. And I think that's important. And uh, one thing about arguing, folks, it takes two to argue. If you don't go to that fight, there's not a fight. Okay, if you don't participate in that, okay, if you don't chime back in or get the last word in, that was one of the things that drove my dad crazy. Uh, when we'd get to rolling around a little bit, uh, he, he said, you always want to get the last word in. Okay, and man, more than once, it got me in trouble. And so even as Christians, folks, uh, there's some times that, you know, the best thing you can do is just be silent. Don't even respond to rude people, okay? And, and that's not being rude back to them. Just tell them why. I don't want to respond. I'm not going to respond the way I, I should respond, okay? And we can set an example uh, when it comes to ceasing from being angry. And I'll tell you this, okay? Spiritual warfare is real during the Christmas season. It's real. I'm just telling you. Satan don't take days off. He sure don't take holidays off. Okay, so don't put yourself in a place to where, and, and I think what people do not understand, especially Christians, folks, you can lose your testimony in about a minute and a half. In 90 seconds, you could lose your testimony. Not that you're lost and you're not saved, but the respect that people have for you, and, and you know, they're just thinking, and I've heard this word more than once. I've heard it said more than once. I thought you were a Christian. Man, you talk about cutting. You know, for somebody to say that about you because you, you have lost your temper, uh, man, we need to start apologizing right away. Not making excuses, okay? Apologizing, so cease from anger. The last scripture, 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy 2, verse 1. Therefore I exert first of all that supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving the thanks be made known for all men. And we need to do these things, all of these things we need to do, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. I, I hope you... Take this scripture. I hope somewhere, you know, either tonight or tomorrow, you will read this and read it slow. I'm going to say it again, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. So folks, be a peacemaker. Uh, you know, I know we can't solve all of life's problems. I, I know we can't solve all of our family problems. Uh, we can't solve all of work problems. And I guess the neatest thing is, you know, since I've been in the ministry, I've always had a full-time job as a full-time youth, youth minister, full-time associate pastor. And the workplace, uh, you know, I, I, we just don't have any issues uh, at our workplace. And it is such a blessing. And I know a lot of you have you know, probably struggle some of where you work. Uh, but just, you know, just be the Christian. Uh, sometimes we have to be the, the bigger person. You know, we have to, sometimes we have to admit, you know, hey, dude, I was wrong. I, I, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, and, and not just I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry is not good enough, I think, with the Lord. I was wrong, I'm sorry, and here's the key. Please forgive me. Okay, that's true repentance. So I hope this will help you, and maybe you need to hand this to somebody that you know. <laughs> you have this here, and just say, hey, uh, Brother Mike shared this with me, and he told me just to, to share it, to give it to somebody else. Uh, so quit worrying, trust in the Lord. Delight in the Lord, commit to the Lord, rest in the Lord, cease from anger. Father, I thank you for the Christmas season. and God, I thank you for the reminder uh, 
you know, in some ways, the holiday blues really describes depression. And uh, I wasn't skirting around that, uh, but there are a lot of people that are depressed during the holidays. So God, I pray that we would be that bright light. Uh, God, I pray that we would be that source of joy. I pray that we would be that one who helps and encourages and uh, ministers to. I pray we would be that servant to others also. And God, uh, not to ring our own bell or not to say, look at what I've done. Uh, But God, we just went down through Scripture. We just went down through what the Word says. So God, I pray this Christmas would be a special time. Um, One of the things that I love, and uh, I don't love it starting too early. I'll just say that out loud, a personal thing. But I love Christmas music, God. It just soothes my soul. Uh, I can fall asleep to it. Uh, It can pick my day up. And uh, God, I pray that we will just be playing Christmas music around others. And God, that we will have the joy of the Lord in our hearts. So God, continue to be with us, be with our church. And thank you for all that are here. I know the youth are having a missionary speak to them tonight. Our WANA program is doing great. And there are just people all over this building on a Wednesday night. And God, I thank you for that. So God, be with us the rest of this week. God, we just look forward to coming back to church on Sunday. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you for the many blessings that you give us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.